I work my computers until they collapse, which means every three to four years, I'm back at the Apple store dropping more money on a new rig whose value and technical relevance plummets faster than Steve Jobs can add another wing to his mansion. You hear about people that build their own computers, but few of us consider ourselves to be electronic engineers. I can swap memory and hard drives with the best of them, but I've never actually built a computer from the ground up. So I'm going to give the hard way a try. Is that wrong? Yeah. And hope I don't end up crawling back to the Apple store on my knees. I am here with Hogan Carter, who is a tech producer and a video engineer. Hogan, I have committed to building a computer. What is my first step? Well, the first step is you got to start your research. Obviously, you want to research which parts you want to uh, start your foundation upon, which is the motherboard, and then you can go from there. I recommend that you start your research with Ars Technica. The online tech resource releases an annual system guide that recommends components based on the kind of computer that you want to build. So what other than the motherboard are the main parts that I'll need? Case, power supply, processor, memory, hard drives, optical drive, floppy drive if you're feeling nostalgic, <laughs> or maybe a card reader, you know, to replace that. Yeah. It's really not too many parts, and I think that's what people don't realize is like, it doesn't take that much to build your custom PC. You know, it seems daunting, but you know, no big deal. It's doable. It's totally doable. <laughs> okay, so what is the biggest benefit to building your own computer? Well, for me, the, the main benefit is just knowing which parts I put into the machine. You can buy a pre-built machine. Yes, they give you a pretty extensive list of options, but usually the price starts to go up way big. So taking the time, doing the research yourself, putting it together yourself, you're going to save a little bit of money, but get a really custom, powerful machine that you'd have to pay maybe like 25 to 50% more for you know, from a pre-built manufacturer. All right, I've got all my parts. I've got Hogan back. We're gonna start building this thing. We're gonna start with the motherboard. Everything's connected to the motherboard. Now it's time for the power supply. Okay, phase one is complete. The motherboard is in, the power is in. It is time for phase two where we put in the DVD drive, we put in the video card, and we put in the hard drives. Now it's time to make sure that all of the components in the computer get power. Weird. Ready? Mm -hmm. Is anything coming up on the monitor? Yeah, oh man! Glory, Glory dude! Oh, that felt good. It works. I was able to build the computer and dual boot in Windows and OS X. Now I'm stuck with a CPU I can't use because I misread during my research and the motherboard wasn't compatible. Newegg doesn't accept returns on open CPUs, so that cost me a bit of cash. All in all, I spent about $1,200. That's not including a monitor, speakers, keyboard, or mouse, which I had from my previous computer. I spent more for higher end parts for gaming and editing. Depending on your needs, you could easily keep your total below $800. Fortunately, I had help from a friend who has a ton of experience building computers. But with research, patience, and a willingness to retry if you run into problems, it's feasible and incredibly satisfying to build your own computer. And I'm no longer an eye slave to the man. Except for iPods, iPhones, iPads, cinema displays, MacBooks, airports, time machines.